Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. You're now locked into the channel where we break down all the latest movies, games, TV shows and comics. Throughout this video we're going to be discussing the real life story that inspired the new horror, The Lighthouse. The Flannan Isle disappearance is one of the biggest unsolved mysteries of the past 200 years and throughout this video we'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about the story as well as the theories behind what really happened. There will be some spoilers in regards to the lighthouse here so if you haven't had a chance to watch the movie yet and don't want some of the aspects ruined then I highly recommend that you turn off now. We won't be spoiling the ending but there are some plot points here that we'll be going over so if you don't want to go in with any prior knowledge then this is your last chance to back out. Without the way I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video, now let's get into our breakdown of the Flannan Isle disappearances. The film The Lighthouse follows two lighthouse watchmen known as Winslow and Wake, the latter of whom begins to turn on the former due to losing his grip on reality and gaining paranoia that makes him begin to take a dark path. Whilst the events that happen in the movie seem very extreme, they're actually a lot closer to the real life events than you may think and the truth is definitely a lot stranger than fiction. The real life story of The Lighthouse starts at the beginning of the prior century in the year 1900 and takes place on Flannan Isle. Flannan Isle is located in the Outer Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland and this remote island was a central pillar of the sea trade in the area. The lighthouse guided ships through the night from crashing into perilous rocks and due to its importance it required three people to man it at all times. This included Thomas Marshall, James Ducat and Donald MacArthur who were all placed on the island over the December to watch over the isle and make sure that the upkeep of the lighthouse was maintained. All men were thought to be loyal, hardworking people that put duty above all else and took pride in their work. A lot of trust had been put in them to man the station and no one would ever believe that they would flee from their post no matter what weather conditions there may be. However, on the 15th of December 1900, the steamer Arch Tor noted that the light was not in operation and when they docked three days later, they passed this information onto the Northern Lighthouse Board. Though this was unusual, it was not uncommon for the time, especially due to the electrical upkeep that was required on such a station and the board didn't attempt to send out a relief vessel until two days later as was scheduled. However, due to poor weather conditions, the boat did not actually reach the island until the 26th of December. Upon arrival, the crew of the relief vessel found that the flag staff had no flag and that all of the provision boxes had been left at the dock. More worrying than this though was the absence of the lighthouse keepers who had not emerged to welcome them to shore. The captain of the relief vessel tried to flag them with both a flare and the ship's whistle but still no one emerged to see them. From here a boat was launched with the relief keeper Joseph Moore, a fourth man that manned the island in rotation. He found the gate and door to the compound locked, all beds unmade and every clock stopped. He returned to the landing stage to inform the relief vessel and joined by a more substantial crew, he journeyed back to the station to find a final entry in the lighthouse log saying that due to weather conditions they had problems on the island throughout the previous week. However, everything in the station seemed fine, untouched except for one single chair which was upturned and a half eaten meal which still lay on the table, almost as if something terrible had happened during it. A coat was still hanging up as well which meant that one person had left the lighthouse without it. The 1912 ballad Flannan Isle by Wilfred Wilson Gibson refers to the conditions that the sailors met upon landing and the lyrics are as follows. Yet as we crowded through the door we only saw a table spread. For dinner, meat and cheese and bread but all untouched and no one there. As though when they sat down to eat, ere they could even taste, Alarm had come and they in haste had risen and left their bread and meat. For at the table had a chair, they tumbled on the floor. Men scoured every inch of the island unable to find anything out of place except for the west landing which seemed to be damaged by storms. A box had broken and its contents were about the island with an iron railway pulled out of the concrete and a ton rock that had been moved from its usual location. Whilst this gave an indication that it could have been the spot that the lives of the keepers ended at, the damage was actually mentioned in the log long before the final entry and thus it could not have led to their disappearance. 
Their bodies were never found, nor a trace of what happened to them. And on the 29th of December, the Northern Lighthouse Board investigation launched an inquiry. Their examination of the logbook revealed very unusual entries, such as one by Thomas Marshall, which read, Severe winds the like of which I have never seen before in 20 years. James has been very quiet and Donald has been crying. Further entries also said that the men had been praying and whatever happened, it's clear that they were very fearful for their lives. What's strange about this is that all the men were experienced lighthouse keepers who, due to the station's location, which was 150 feet above sea level, would have been safe from harm. What's even more alarming is that there were no reports of storms in the area that week and the final entry in the journal actually read, Storm ended, sea calm, God is over all, meaning that, at least from their perspective, it had ended. Whilst the investigation could not find any evidence on the island, they summarised that MacArthur, who was required to stay behind in all operations to man the lighthouse, watched for danger as the other two tried to moor a loose box and he saw incoming waves. After running down and trying to warn his colleagues of the danger, he was too late and they were all swept aside by one giant wave. This would explain the overturned chair, coat that still remained hanging, and meal that had been placed out. However, it doesn't really clear up why the door and gate were locked, as MacArthur would have had to stop to carry out both of these tasks. Thus meaning that he rushed to get outside, and then took his time making sure that everything was closed up properly. Further investigations began to paint the lighthouse occupiers themselves as the main causes behind the disappearances, with one report alleging that MacArthur, who was renowned for his short temper, may have become volatile and lashed out at one of the men near the edge of a cliff. The other one rushed over to break up the fight, and caused all three to fall to their deaths. Another theory is that MacArthur went insane, attacked the men during their mealtime, and left the lighthouse, throwing their bodies into the sea. He then went back to lock everything up and jumped over the cliff to his own death. This would explain why he didn't take his coat, and why the chair and meal were placed at the scene. However, there are also more paranormal theories which range from all manner of things. Horror of Fang Rock uses the incident as an inspiration, and says that they may have been abducted by aliens. Some believe that a giant serpent or bird attacked the island, whilst others theorise that they had been taken away by foreign spies. Some believe that they faked their own deaths in order to start a new life, and the 2018 movie The Vanishing states that the men accidentally ended up killing a man who drifted ashore and covered this up, lying about the weather conditions in order to mask their disappearances and steal his precious cargo. None of these explanations, though, have ever brought any comfort to the families left behind by the keepers, and James Ducat left a widow and four children, whilst Donald MacArthur left behind a widow and two. Their disappearances have cast a long shadow over lighthouse keeping for 100 years, and it is unlikely that we will get to the bottom of exactly what happened. No doubt the theories will continue to come from whoever hears about the tale, but as of yet we have no real evidence that confirms anything. This is why The Lighthouse is such a fascinating film. It is massively open to interpretation and many of the events that have been in it can be seen as part of the characters' imaginations or something supernatural that is happening to them. The Flannan Lighthouse stands as a strong reminder that the world is a very strange place and the lighthouse exemplifies this perfectly in every single aspect. It's why it's one of my favourite horror movies of the last decade, and if you haven't seen it yet and this video has piqued your interest, then I highly recommend that you seek it out and give it a try. The acting is superb and there's a real atmosphere to the entire piece that makes it an instant classic and definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of horror movies that have a dark sense of humour. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Flannan Lighthouse disappearance and if you have any theories then make sure you leave them in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to check out my full ending explained breakdown of the lighthouse which will be linked at the end. I go over everything you need to know about the film and give my interpretation on it, so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more or have any additional questions about the movie. If you want to come chat to me after the video then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT or head over to my Discord server which will be linked in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with all the latest videos on the channel, so hopefully I'll see you over there very soon. We're also giving away a free copy of the Marvel Phase 3 Part 1 box set and Blu-ray which contains Civil War, Doctor Strange, Homecoming, Ragnarok and more, and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, and leave your thoughts on the lighthouse in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen on the 15th of November and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part.
This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.